Turn your light on when the light Call the meeting of the City Council to order for Monday evening, September 28, 2015. Please stand and join with me as we salute our American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. I would ask that everybody remain standing, please. Councilor DiNapoli. Thank you, Mr. President. Earlier this week, I lost a, uh, a friend and a, a former colleague, Peter Aziaf, who served on this council for many, many years. And I served with him from 2000 to 2006. And he was also a county commissioner for many, many years. He was a friend and a colleague, and I, I, uh, I honor him tonight with a moment of silence. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. <coughs> Just to mention that Councilor Aziaf was a, was a true Brocktonian and, and definitely served this city and served it very well in the best interest of the, of the people of this city as well. So may he rest in peace. First order of business, we have the election of the uh, city clerk. And this is um, the election of the city clerk. As you know, he serves as our, our, our clerk to the council. And this is for a three-year term beginning January 1st, 2016 and ending January 7th, 2019. Nominations are now open. Mr. President, Council I nominate Sinsky. Mr. Anthony Zioli. Mr. Zioli has been second. nominated. I have a second. Yeah. Councilor DiNapoli. Yes, Mr. President, I second the nomination of Mr. Tony Zioli. Motion is made and seconded. Council Move to close the nomination. And, and we also get... closing of nominations. Motion has been made to close nominations. All in favor of that? Opposed? And now, at this particular time, we'll take a <coughs> roll call vote to elect our new um, clerk to the council. Hayes Act. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. DiNapoli. Yes. Yes. Ianeri. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. 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 Eleven for Anthony Zioli. Eleven for our city clerk, Mr. Anthony Zioli, Councilor Cruz. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I make a motion for reconsideration in the hopes it does not prevail. Second. Second. Motion been made and second for reconsideration in hopes it does not prevail. All in favor of reconsideration. <laughs> All opposed. Reconsideration fails. We have our new city clerk, Mr. Anthony Zioli. Thank you, Councillors. I look forward to working with you for another three years, and who knows after that. <laughs> thank you for your vote of confidence tonight. Thank you, Mr. Clerk, and it's always a pleasure to have you here with us, and you do work very diligently for us, and we appreciate that. Tomorrow morning, you can take some tips from Councillor Stewart. He might have some things he wants to leave you with before he departs. <laughs> I don't know if he wants to, but anyhow, that being said, um, at this point in time, Councillor Mr. Aza. President, I would like to present a citation to Mrs. Pat Hull. She can come up to the podium. Councilor Aziak has a citation. No one has any problem with that at this uh, <coughs> point. Go ahead. I would like to thank Pat Hull for all her hard work and dedication with um, the DW Fields Park Association. Pat has been involved with the DW Fields Park Association since 1997. Um, she, was the pr she has been the president for the past seven years. And um, I believe she said uh, she retired from being president in June, past June, but she's still very involved with the association. Um, the reason I'm presenting this to her is because I'm amazed at how hard she's worked to keep our, a tr we have a jewel in our city, DW Fields Park. And um, she has worked hard to preserve it, as well as the group that, you know, she works well with. Barbara Shinnick is another person that she worked um, with to make DW Fields Park a historic, um, a historic site. It was actually put on the Na National Registry back in 2000. Um, so I'm, I would just like to thank her once again for her tireless work and efforts in um, preserving our crown jewel. So I'm going to read the citation to you. Okay. So official citation, be it known that the Brockton City Council hereby <coughs> extends its congratulations to Pat Hull in recognition of being president and member of the DW Fields Park Association. And be it further known that the City Council extends best wishes for continued success that this citation be duly signed by president of the council and attested to and a copy thereof transmitted in the clerk's council. Thank you.
Thank you, Councilor, and, and we also want to thank uh, our friend that uh, does a lot of work at DW Fields Park. We appreciate all that uh, all that she does, and we appreciate that truly. Uh, the next item, uh, who's joining me here? Who's reading? She is. Okay, Robin. Okay. Appointment of Mario Lopes Alves, 23 Smith Ave, Brockton, as a constable in the City of Brockton for a term of three years. Refer to finance. Reappointment of David A. Aziaf, 5 Tarkin Hill Lane, Bridgewater, as a constable in the city of Brockton for a term of three years. Referred to finance. Petition of Monroe Muffler Brake, Inc. for a <coughs> motor vehicle repair mechanical license located at 753 Belmont Street, Brockton. Time having arrived, I declare the hearing open. If there's anyone here in favor of this petition, I'd ask that the police come forward and state their name and address to the clerk. Is there anyone here present? That's for 735 Belmont Street. Yes, sir. My name is uh, George Jarrett. I'm the Director of Development, 11 Jarrett Road, Scottsville, New York. Very good. And you're here in favor of this particular petition, correct? I am, yes, sir. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add? Or? Uh, do we just purchase the business? We've assumed the lease. It's the same employees. We're just wanting to get our business license. We've been working with Captain Williams on some building issues. Those have been resolved. Okay. Very good. Is there anyone else here that would like to be heard in favor of this petition? Anyone else in favor? I declare that part of the hearing closed. Is there anyone here in opposition? Please come forward and state your name and address to the clerk. Anyone here in opposition? Seeing none, I declare that. Mr. President. Part of the hearing closed. Councilor Cruz. I, I met with Mr. Jarrett. This is essentially, uh, we don't do transfers, but essentially a transfer at the uh, Mass Tire building. And uh, I'm glad they've taken it over. And, and have worked with Captain Williams, so it looks, uh, I have no objections and we'll be recommending. Very good. good. Pass. Any other questions or comments, counselors? All in favor? Opposed? Mm -hmm. So, so forward. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Item number five, Madam Clerk. Petition of Gerard E. Toppa, DBA Speedy Oil Change for a Motor Vehicle Repair Mechanical License located at 800 Crescent Street. Time having arrived, I declare this hearing open. If there's anyone here, please come forward and state your name and address to the clerk as well. That's for the 800 Crescent Street location. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Um, Gerard Topa, 38 Grove Street, Brockton, Mass. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add? Or? We've been there for since 2009. Um, I, don't know. I don't know what to add. <laughs> okay. All right. Councilor DiNapoli, anything? I know what you're Thanks, sir. Mr. President, only I'll let you sit, Council. Since you're the you. senior member, you may sit. <coughs> Thank you. Don't get too comfortable, though. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, are, are you going to change any, your hours of operation? Absolutely not. So everything will stay the same? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, you run a, run a great business, and I, I know Mike is the, uh, the landlord of your business. Uh, the only thing that I want to do is I want to put, stipula I put stipulations in all mechanical garages. They should not interfere with your work. The stipulations are going to be no storing of uh, auto byproducts outside and no vending machines and no phone, which you do not have anyway. But I, I put stipulations on that just in case we do have problems on the road. Okay? Certainly. Other than that, uh, I really appreciate you uh, staying in Brockton and, uh, and, and good luck and continue to uh, thrive on your business. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. President. Thank you. Is there anyone else here uh, present that would like to be heard in favor of uh, this petition? Please come forward. State your name to the clerk. My name is Michael Mather, Mike. uh, P.O. Box 4143 Brockton. My family's owned the business, owned that land since 1985. Chevy's been a great, uh, great tenant, pays on time. So I'm hoping they'll keep him there. <laughs> and uh, his wife is involved a lot with the, uh, with the business. So it's really a family-run business that should be proud to be in Brockton, should be proud to be kept in Brockton. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Anyone else that would like to be heard? <coughs> Mr. Leonard? Yes, Mr. President. Uh, Gary Leonard, uh, Main Street Manager here in the city of Brockton. I have been down to Mr. Topper's establishment many times. He runs a very clean business. He's a very good businessman, and I'm in favor of him retaining his license. Very good. Thank you. Anyone else in favor of? Anyone else? Mr. Spears? My name is Holly Spears, 69 Bud Ave. I just want to say that Jerry and his wife are great people in the city. Um, they helped us for the last two years with our Thanksgiving drive, and they, they donated, and Christmas too, they donated 
turkeys, food, Christmas gifts. So they're, they're great assets to the city, and I, and I appreciate that you guys passed them. Very good. Thank you. Anyone else in favor? Seeing none, I declare that part of the hearing closed. Anyone here in opposition? If there's anyone here in opposition to, to the uh, proposal, please come forward. Seeing none, I declare that part of the hearing closed. Councilor DiNapoli did mention uh, stipulation. Uh, it was one stipulation, am I correct, Councilor? Uh, Mr. President, no, there were, there were, there were really two. Uh, okay. they, they, they are as follow: No storing of auto, bi auto byproducts and no vending machines and no <coughs> phone calls. On very, the very good. Outside. Okay, so outside. this time everybody... Uh, have to have a phone in, inside. Everyone in favor of the stipulations? <coughs> I mean, opposed to it? In favor of. Okay, now, now is to, um, to appropriate the... Um, to appoint, yeah. To approve the hearing, the hearing... The license. I'll get it right yet, kids. <laughs> All in favor of? It's been a long time. Opposed? You did a great job. So approved. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Petition of Jean Bastian for a garage license located at 1061 Montello Street. Time having arrived, I declare the hearing open. If there's anyone here in favor, please come forward. State your name and address to the clerk. My name is Jean Bastian. Uh, I, on GC, I got the business on Boakton since 1998, yeah. and I live in 12 Auburn Street in Boakton. Very good. Is there anyone else here in favor would like to be heard? Please come forward and state your name and address to the clerk as well. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm Eve Cajus, 14 Michael Drive in Boakton. Uh, actually, I know uh, Charlotte for probably 12 years. And also, I do advertising on my TV show. Uh, for the past eight years, I never received any complaint coming from my audience about his services. Very good. Thank you. Anyone else that wants to be here, ma'am? My name is Marlene Amidi. I live in 47 Herald Ave in Boston. So I know um, Mr. Baskin for a long time. He's been a, big, a great business owner in the community, and he's been very helpful to the community as a whole. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Anyone else that wishes to be heard in favor of? Please come forward. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Larry Silver. I live here in Brockton in 36 Tata Square for 20 years. I come to know, I call him Charlo, 20 years ago. He hasn't been anything but helpful to the community. I knew him when he worked for High Tech in Warren Avenue. As he made the transition to own his own business, and now he's just acquiring a building that was abandoned in Brockton, and now he has restored this building. He has spent a lot of money in this location, and also he's a good man. He extended his heart to everyone, including, he doesn't talk about it, this man right here. When they left him in town and took off to Canada. They asked him to go to shelter. He says, you'll be my shelter. And Charlotte took him in. Now he worked with Charlotte at his location. Charlotte not only helped other people, he also teach and counsel a lot of youths. So this building will certainly come to be benefit to the city. He will certainly give a lot of people a job because it's a big building and it will come to benefit the community because this building was actually abandoned. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Anyone else who wants to be heard, please come forward in favor of. Yep. My name is Leander DeRose. I'm a real estate agent here in the Brockton area. Uh, I've come to know Mr. Bastion for a period of time, and uh, the thing with businesses is it's all about referrals, and he seems to always have that. So. I see that he could be a great uh, asset to the community as well with the, the new building. Very good. Thank you. thank you. Anyone else who wishes to be heard? How are you? Good. Thank you. Go My name is Melissa Leonard. I am a resident of Boston, <coughs> lived 30 Eagle Lab for 23 years. And uh, I have met Charlo to a friend because my car was giving me problem and my friend referred me to him. When I bought the car over there and uh, I left the car, he was very nice after he fixed it to come pick me up at my job to go pick up the car, which I really appreciated. So I figured someone like that, we need him in the community. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else that wishes to be heard in favor of? Seeing none, I declare that part of the hearing closed. Is there anyone here in opposition? Anyone here in opposition, please come up. State your name to the clerk. 
Seeing none, I declare President, that power. Mike, Council of Councilor Paul Stonensky, Ward 4, I met with uh, Jean's uh, this morning and uh, we went over some stipulations. I do want my fellow councilors to know he's a hardworking businessman, uh, very, very busy, he has a lot of people he's associated with, as you can see. He's a fine gentleman. I, after this, I will be moving this application to grant the license with these following conditions. He'll be operating Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. There are no residences close to where his building is, and he's closed off to anything, facing anything that's a residence. Uh, it's a perfect location for this kind of a business. Uh, the the uh, maximum number of vehicles associated with this business beyond the premises during the day will be 24, including employee and customer vehicles, as well as vehicles in need of repair and any vehicle related to accessory business associated with the license. The maximum number of vehicles will be stored outside overnight is 16. This includes all vehicles associated with any business operated by the lenses holder on this property, including any business such as a used car sales. There's no outside storage of automotive parts or products such as oil, grease, gasoline. There's no outside coin operated machines, including but not limited to pay phones and vending machines. The property shall be kept clean and neat and free of uh, debris at all times. And I go by it constantly, and his, both of his other properties moving from is always very clean. He does a nice job with that. Uh, there will be no painting, priming, or bonding until such time as the proper equipment has been installed and approved by the fire department. And uh, in talking with him today, he had no intentions of doing that, but as the business expands, he may. And he would go get the proper license. The license shall not be issued by the city clerk until the building inspector shall provide written confirmation of flying conditions been satisfied. A gas trap <laughs> is required by the building department. And the, a dumpster and concrete pad with screening fence shall be installed. Uh, and uh, he's very, very good to work with, and he's been a, a real good person, business person down that area. So I would be in favor of this. Okay. So you're making a motion to approve I, as I am. That's correct, Mr. President. The stipulations. Do I second. Have a second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve as it's been stipulated. All in favor? <coughs> Opposed? The license has been uh, granted. That's the garage license. The garage license, yeah. <coughs> Item, item number seven, Madam Clerk. Okay. Petition of Jean Bastian, DBA, JCB Auto Repair and Towing for a motor vehicle repair mechanical body license located at 1061 Montello Street. Time having arrived, I declare this hearing open. If there's somebody here in favor that would like to speak on this behalf, this is the auto uh, repair and towing for the motor vehicle repair mechanical body license at the same address. If anyone wants to just come up and state your name, if you want to do that, just... I'm sure everyone that would come back up is going to diddle the same thing, so we'll save some time, <laughs> all right? Yes, sir. How's My that? name is Jean okay. yeah, I live in 12 Urban Street. Okay, very I good. I've been in back since 1998. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, and, and I'm just going to leave it at that if anyone else had anything to say, but I think we've said that in the, in the last, so I don't want to see us have to uh, repeat. Um, Councilor Stadinsky, anything on? Uh, nothing. Uh, these are coupled together, same, uh, same building. Uh, to make a motion that we approve this license also. Second. Okay. Thank you. Motion's been made and, and seconded to, to approve this part of the license as well. All in favor? <laughs> Opposed? So approved. Report of the Finance Committee for its meeting of September 8, 2015. Accepted and placed on file. Report of the Real Estate Committee for its meeting of September 8, 2015. Accept, accepted and placed on file. Re report of the, of the Ordinance Committee for its meeting of September 14, 2015. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Water Commission recommending that the City Council hire an independent legal counsel to evaluate the Aquaria existing contract to determine if it has been breached to release the City from its obligation. Accepted and placed on file. From the Mayor in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, in order to fund all of the costs, including retroactive costs of a collective bargaining agreement between the City and Local 1142 of the Laborers Union for the three-year period of July 1st, 2013 through June 30th, 2016, hereby recommending that the City Council authorizes the appropriation of $450,156 from unappropriated fiscal year 16 tax levy and $38,000 from unappropriated fiscal year 16 refuse enterprise estimated receipts, total of $488,156. Accepted and placed on file. 
from the CFO in accordance with Section 5 of the Act of 324 of the Act of 1990, certifying that the financial resources and revenues of the City of Brockton are and will be adequate for fiscal year 16 only to support the proposed appropriation from the various sources of $488,156 to various departments for purposes of settling a three-year contract with the Laborers' Union. This is a conditional certification for fiscal year 16 only. He is able to provide the certification for fiscal year 16 because the funding comes from unappropriated fiscal year 16 revenues, primarily tax levy growth. However, for fiscal year 17 and beyond, this contract will exacerbate the budgetary imbalance described in his fiscal year 16 budget letter and in the credit reports of Moody's and Standard & Poor. These are available on the Finance Department webpage. Accepted and placed on file. From the Board of Assessors, after review of the balances and the various overlay accounts, recommending the following be transferred to overlay surplus. Um, fiscal year 2008, 190,000. <coughs> fiscal year 2000, fiscal year um, 2009, 220,000. Fiscal year 2011, 340,000. These funds may be used for any purpose before the end of fiscal year. Accepted and placed on file. From the Mayor, in accordance with the provisions of Chapter mm -hmm. 44 of the Master General Law, recommending the City Council authorize the appropriation of $340,000 from fiscal year 2011 overlay surplus and $220,000 from fiscal year 2009 overlay surplus to the Stabilization Fund for a total appropriation of $560,000 to that fund. The funding comes from the surplus and overlay accounts as identified by the Board of Assessors in the letter dated July 20, 2015. Accepted and placed on file. From the CFO, um, in accordance with Section 5 of Chapter 324 of the Act of 1990, certifying the proposed appropriation of 220000 from overlay surplus of fiscal year 2009 and 340000 from overlay surplus from fiscal year 2011 to the Stabilization Fund. Accepted and placed on file. From the Board of Assessors, after review of the balances and the various overlay accounts, recommending the following be transferred to overlay surplus. Fiscal year 2008, 190000 Fiscal year 2009, 220000 Fiscal year 2011, 340000 These funds may be used for any purpose before the end of the fiscal year. Accepted and placed on file. From the Mayor, in accordance with the provisions of Chapter 44 of the Mass General Law, recommending that the City Council authorize the appropriation of $130,000 from overlay surplus of fiscal year 2008. This Stabilization Fund to provide additional funding in the Stabilization Reserve. The funding comes from overlay surplus amounts as declared by the Board of Assessors. The total declared for fiscal year 2008, 2009, and 2011 was $750,000 inclusive. He proposes using $60,000 from the fiscal year 2008 amount, $40,000 for holiday decorations, and $20,000 for a library grant match but also proposes moving the balance to the stabilization fund. The total to the stabilization from the three years will be $690,000. Accepted and placed on file. From the CFO in accordance with Section 5 of Chapter 324 of the Act of 1990, certifying the proposed $130,000 from fiscal year 08 overlay surplus to stabilization fund. Accepted and placed on file. From the Board of Assessors, after review of the balances and the various overlay accounts, recommending the following be transferred to overlay surplus. Fiscal year 2008, 190,000. Fiscal year 2009, 220,000. Fiscal year 2011, 340,000. These funds may be used for any purpose before the end of the fiscal year. Accepted and placed on file. President, if I Council could, uh, agenda item 17 and 20, are they, was that just a scrivener's error or is there a reason why they're repetitive? I know, I, I noticed that as well, that they're there twice. Um, I can't, Robin, do you happen to know because it's the same, it's in there three, it's in yeah. there like three times. For each, for each set of communications, they, okay. they but they're all the same, okay. there, even though they're the same. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. So You're welcome. Number 20? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On uh, 19 or 20? 20. Okay. Uh, I think... From, 20, from the Board of Assessors, after review of the balances and the various overlay accounts, recommending the following be transferred to overlay surplus. Fiscal year 2008, 190000 Fiscal year 2009, 220000 Fiscal year 2011, 340000 These funds may be used for any purpose before the end of the fiscal year. Accepted and placed on file. From the Mayor, in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, in order to fund the memorandum of agreement between the city and the library union recommending that the city council authorize the appropriation of 20,000 from overlay surplus of fiscal year 2008 20,000 the library personnel services overtime 8,000 and library <coughs> purchase of service 12,000 to provide the funding necessary for the agreement 
to add to a grant from the Library Foundation for the extending of hours at the West and East branches, eight hours per week at each, each branch for the balance of the fiscal year. This funding adds to the contribution of $75,000 from the Brockton Library Foundation. Furthermore, requesting that the City Council authorize the acceptance and expenditure of $75,000 dollars from the Brockton Library Foundation for purposes of providing an additional eight hours per week at each of the West and East branches for the rest of this fiscal year in order to get maximum benefit of this program asking for passage on the suspension of the rules. Except an inflation on file. From the CFO, um, in accordance with section 5 of chapter 324 of the Acts of 1990 certifying the proposed acceptance and expenditure of a $75,000 grant from the Brockton Library Foundation for purposes of extending hours at the West and East branches and a proposed appropriation of 20000 in order to accomplish this purpose in accordance with the agreement of the Library Union. Accepted and placed on file. From the DPW Commissioner requesting an appropriation of $40,000 in order to purchase and install holiday decorations for the new street lights that were recently installed on Main Street and to purchase lights to decorate the trees on Main Street and around the City Hall complex. Accepted and placed on file. From the Mayor in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, recommending the City Council authorize the appropriation of $40,000 from overlay surplus fiscal year 2008 to DPW Highway Department Ordinary Maintenance $40,000 to provide purchase and installation of holiday decorations and lights for the new street lights on Main Street and for City Hall. Accepted and placed on file. So CFO in accordance with Section 5 of Chapter 324 of the Acts of 1990 certifying the proposed appropriation of $40,000 from overlay surplus fiscal 2008 to DPW Highway Department ordinary maintenance purchase of goods. Excuse me, accepted and placed on file. From the assistant auditor certifying that the balance of the reserve receipts reserved for appropriation as of September 15, 2015 is $136,781.95. Accepted and placed on file. The chief of the fire department requesting a transfer from the ambulance receipts accounts for $16,590 to department equipment for the following two purchases. Um, First one is uh, $15,690 for nine performed mobile software licenses for use by the contracted ambulance service. This will provide the ability for a two-way flow of dispatching information between fire alarm and the ambulances in the field. This enhances the safety of the members and security of information. Included in this request is the annual maintenance fee for support services of the mobile licenses. The second is $900 for the purchase of three emergency medical dispatch EMD guide cards with racks. These will be used by the fire alarm operators when receiving and dispatching emergency medical incidents in compliance with the current standards. Accepted and placed on file. For the mayor, in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, <coughs> recommending a transfer of $16,590 from fire department ambulance receipts to fire department equipment. Um, this will allow for nine perform mobile software licenses for use by the contracted ambulance service. This will provide the ability for a two-way flow of dispatching information between fire alarm and ambulances in the field. This enhances the safety of the members and security of information. Included in this request is annual maintenance fee for support services of the, modal, of the mobile licenses. Accepted and placed on file. Um, from the CFO um, relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. From the Assistant City Auditor certifying that the balance of the Thatcher Street landfill as of September 15, 2015 is $1,103,227.99. Accepted and placed on file. From the DPW Commissioner in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 28C, requesting an appropriation of $366,330 from the landfill reserve account. The landfill reserve account was created for the purpose of maintaining the closed landfill. <coughs> the reason for this request is for the maintenance, repair, replacement, and other related projects for the continuing maintenance of the Thatcher Street landfill. Accepted and placed on file. From the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. From the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. From the emergency management director requesting acceptance of the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency SHSP grant in the amount of $4,928.75. The intended use for this funding will be to purchase portable radio communication equipment. No <coughs> match is required. Accepted and placed on file. From the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. From the mayor in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44 recommending that the City Council authorize the creation of the proposed D.W. Clark Economic 
opportunity area and also that the City Council approves the application for approval of this EOA to the State Economic Assistance Coordinating Council, EACC. Accepted and placed on file. From the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. From the Treasurer Collector re requesting an appropriation of $2,000 be added to the Treasurer Collector's budget to cover the additional cost of the City's 1.45% portion of Medicare tax. This increase is needed due to the potential hiring of five additional police officers. Accepted and placed on file. From the Chief of Police requesting <coughs> an amendment to his July 13, 2015 request for six additional police officers. This request is for a total of 12 officers and there is adequate funding in the department's budget for these additional officers. Accepted and placed on file. From the Director of Personnel requesting an additional appropriation of $50,000 from the Fiscal Year 16 Personnel Department Health Insurance Appropriation Account. This appropriation is based on five additional police officers, Family Blue Care Elect, City contribution of $1,697 per month times five employees times six months. Accepted and placed on file. From the Mayor, in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, recommended the City Council authorize the appropriation of $218,000 from unappropriated receipts, fiscal year 16 tax levy, um, to Police Department personnel services other than overtime, $165,000, Personnel Department employee benefits, $51,000, Treasurer Medicare tax, $2,000, in order to provide funding for six additional police recruits and their benefits for six months. Accepted and placed on file. From the CFO in accordance with Section 5 of Chapter 324 of the Act of 1990, certifying the proposed appropriation for fiscal year 16 only in the amount of 218000 from unappropriated receipts, fiscal year 16 tax levy, to Police Department personnel services other than overtime, 165000 personnel department employee benefits, 51000 treasurer's Medicare tax, 2000 this is a conditional certification for fiscal year 16 only. This funding will allow for six new recruits in addition to those already in the budget, bringing the size of the requested class to 11. The CFO cannot provide a positive certification for the years after fiscal year 16 <coughs> because this action exacerbates the fiscal budgetary imbalance which we are now experiencing. Accepted and placed on file. <coughs> From the Mayor, in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, recommending that the City Council authorize the appropriation of 167000 from unappropriated estimated receipts, fiscal year 16 tax levy, to library personnel services other than overtime, $165,500, library personal services other than overtime, $1,500, in order to provide funding for all of the costs, including retroactive costs of a collective bargaining agreement between the City and its library union employees, local 808 unit of SEIU for the three year period July 1st, 2013 through June 30th, 2016. Accepted and placed on file. From the CFO in accordance with Section 5 of Chapter 324 of the Acts of 1990, certifying the proposed appropriation of $167,000 from unappropriated fiscal year 16 estimated receipts tax levy to library personal services appropriations to provide funding for the three year library union contract fiscal year 14 to fiscal year 16. This is a conditional certification for fiscal year 16 only. The funding is available for only fiscal year 16 because it comes from unappropriated fiscal year 16 tax levy revenues. However, for fiscal year <coughs> 17 and beyond, this contract's cost will exacerbate the budgetary imbalance described in the CFO's fiscal year 16 budget letter and credit report of Moody's and Standard & Poor. Accepted and placed on file. From the Mayor, in accordance with Mass General Law, Recommending the City Council authorize the tax increment financing plan between the City and Commercial Yard LLC on behalf of D.W. Clark, Inc. and the tax increment financing agreement between the City and Commercial Yard LLC and D.W. Clark, Inc. Accepted and placed on file. From the CFO, um, in accordance with Section 5 of Chapter 324 of the Acts of 1990, certifying the proposed pro approval of the tax increment financing plan between the City and Commercial Yard LLC on behalf of D.W. Clark, Inc. and the tax increment financing agreement between the City and Commercial Yard <coughs> LLC and D.W. Clark, Inc. This proposal would result in renovation of a vacant foundry into a precision metals manufacturing plant, gain a $6 million investment in the City, create new jobs, and generate <coughs> new property tax growth. Accepted and placed on file. An ordinance amending Part 2 of the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton as follows. Part 2 of the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton are hereby amended by increasing various fees. Questions on passage to a third reading. All in favor? Opposed? Goes to a third reading.
An ordinance amending Chapter 23 of the Revised Ordinances of the City of Brockton be ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton as follows. Pursuant to Chapter 23, Section 30F6, in substitution for the water rate increase proposed by the Brockton Water Commission on February 10, 2015. The question is on passage to a third reading. Councilor Cruz. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. After we vote on this to a third reading, uh, this uh, actually caused some confusion last time. I'd like to ask you to send it to finance after we vote to send it to a third reading, if you could. Okay, very good. We can do that. Question is passage to a third reading. All in favor? Opposed? It will go to a third reading and then we'll return back to go to finance. Next item. An ordinance amending Chapter 8 of the Revised Ordinances of the City of Brockton. Be it ordained as follows. Chapter 8, Garbage and Trash, is hereby amended by adding the following new article. Article 3, Abandoned Shopping Carts. Um, Did we skip to quite Questions on the amendment? All in favor of the amendment? All opposed? Amendment passes. Question now is on, pa the question is on the passage to a third reading. As amended, all in favor? Opposed? Goes to a third reading. Okay. Ordered that the sum of $400,000 is appropriated to pay costs of stormwater management planning, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the Treasurer, with the approval of the Mayor, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Chapter 44 and or Chapter 29C of the General Laws, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the City. The question is on adoption by roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. <coughs> Hazak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. No. Dubois. No. Ionary. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Nine in the affirmative, two in the negative. The order is adopted. Ordered that the sum of $1,200,000 is appropriated to pay costs of purchasing a new fire ladder truck and for payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the Treasurer, with the approval of the Mayor, is authorized to borrow $1,200,000 under in pursuant to General Law Chapter 44, Section 7 9 of the General Laws, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the city, provided that the city obtains the authority of the voters by means of a referendum to exclude the annual cost of the debt service from the provisions of Proposition 2 and a half. This is a conditional certification which must be included on the face of the City Council order. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Tanapoli. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Ioneri. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Eleven in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Council of Denapoli. Mr. President, move for reconsideration. Hope doesn't prevail. Second. On item 52. I mean, uh, item number 52. 52 motion. 52. Yes. Motion has been made for reconsideration. and hopes it does not prevail. All in favor of reconsideration. All opposed. Reconsideration fails. Madam Clerk. What is that the sum of $1,840,000 is appropriated to pay costs to various sewer system improvements, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the Treasurer, with the approval of the Mayor, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Chapter 44 and or Chapter 29C of the General Laws, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the City, provided that during the life of the loans, the City Council periodically adopts a rate structure which is capable of fully supporting all operating and maintenance costs of the sewer enterprise system, including debt service. This is a conditional certification which must be included on the face of the City Council order. The question is on adoption by roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. No. Dubois. No. Ioneri. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Nine in the affirmative. <coughs> the order is adopted. Ordered that the sum of $3,810,000 is appropriated to pay costs <laughs> of improvement to various water mains, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the Treasurer, with the approval of the Mayor, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Chapter 44 and or Chapter 29C of the General Laws, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the City, provided that the City Council enacts a rate increase of 30% on each rate block as requested by the Water Commission, provided further that if that <coughs> increase is enacted in phases, 
that the full effect of that increase is reflected on all billings mailed no later than January 1, 2017, and provided further that thereafter the City Council periodically raises rates as necessary to ensure that the water revenues are sufficient to provide full recovery of the cost of operating and maintaining the Water Enterprise Fund, including the cost of debt service. This is a conditional certification which That's must be included on the face of the City Council order. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Hayes Hack. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. No. Dubois. No. Ionieri. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Nine in the affirmative, two in the negative. The order is adopted. <coughs> Ordered that the sum of $4,880,000 is appropriated to pay costs of water improvements including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the Treasurer, with the approval of the Mayor, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Chapter 44 and or Chapter 29C of the General Laws, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the City, provided that the City Council enacts a rate increase of 30% on each rate block, wow. as requested by the Water Commission, provided further that if that increase is enacted in phases, that the full effect of that increase is reflected on all billings mailed no later than January 1, 2017, and provided further that thereafter the City Council periodically raises rates as necessary to ensure that the water revenues are sufficient to provide full recovery of the cost of operating and maintaining <coughs> the Water Enterprise Fund, including the cost of debt service. This is a conditional certification which must be included on the face of the City Council order. Mr. President. Councillor Dubois. Um, before we vote on this, I just want, I know that it's a lot of reading and a lot of monotone tonight, and we've had a lot of um, bills and orders introduced and ordinances and spending issues where they were referred to committee. But I just want everyone here and everyone at home to know that right now, this is a vote that says we're going to bond out four million, over four million, close to five million dollars through number 55 to fix um, water infrastructure and the conditional approval says more or less that we have to raise water rates for thir by 30 percent to, um, to be able to afford this. So I know that a lot of my fellow councillors have been voting no on water increases. So if we now are going to um, vote to bond out all this debt and not to fix the roads and the water infrastructure, I hope that um, my fellow councillors are ready to raise water rates on the consumer and I'm really not ready to do that. And so I just hope that everybody understands that there's a specific and exact connection between increasing water rates and approving this almost eight million dollars in bonding capacity. Um, and that's going to be passed on to the water rate consumers and now that we have the outside water metering ordinance, that means that the little guy may be paying more of, the fa more of their share than they really deserve. So I hope that everybody takes that into consideration. Um, thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Councillor. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Mr. Thanks. President, I'm Motion just confused. Please. We're voting on number 56, correct? Uh, 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Councillor Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. No. Dubois. No. Ionieri. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Nine in the affirmative, two in the negative. The order is adopted. Ordered that the sum of 642000 is appropriated to pay costs of purchasing vehicles for the use of area city departments, except for us below. Vehicles including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto. One transit van for the public <coughs> property department, $27,000 six marked and four unmarked police cruisers, $310,000, one box <coughs> truck for the school department, $78,000, one bobcat for the school department, $47,000, two sander trucks for the DPW, $180,000, a total of $642,000. And that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the mayor is authorized to borrow $642,000 under and pursuant to general law, chapter 44, section 7 and 9 of the general laws pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the city, provided that the city obtains the authority of the voters by means of a referendum to exclude the annual cost of the debt service from the provisions of Proposition 2 and a half. This is a conditional certification which must be included on the face of the City Council order. Questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Hack. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Denapoli. Yes. 
Dubois. Yes. Ayaniri. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. 11 in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Ordered that the sum of $234,000 is appropriated to pay costs of purchasing the items of departmental equipment described below, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto. Wide format color copier printer for the planning department, $14,000. Voting machines for the Board of Elections, $220,000 for a total of $234,000. And that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow $234,000 under and pursuant to General Law, Chapter 44, Section 79 of the General Laws, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the city, provided that the city obtains the authority of the voters by means of a referendum to exclude the annual costs of the debt service from the provisions of Proposition 2 and a half. This is a conditional certification which must be included on the face of the City Council order. Questions on adoption by roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. An athlete. Yes. Bois. No. Ianeri. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. President. And in the affirmative. To be clear, that was number 57, right? Correct. That was number 57. Sure that, okay, great. That's correct. <laughs> I knew it was. I the order is adopted. Appointment of Officer Antonio <coughs> Randolph. Mr. President. Councilor Cruz. Make a motion to take items 58 through 65 collectively. Second. second. Motion to be made and second. We take items 58 through 65 collectively. All in favor? Opposed? We'll read them uh, collectively, Madam Clerk. Appointment of Officer Antonio Randolph of the Brockton Police Department as a weigher of trucks in the City of Brockton. Appointment of Jean Derencourt at 15 Midland Street, Brockton to the Brockton Library Board of Trustees for a three-year term. Appointment of Dr. Joseph P. Pauly Cape, 715 Main Street, Brockton to the Board of Trustees for the Brockton Public Library for a three-year term ending August 2018. Appointment of Amina Pilgrim, 10 Columbia Street, Brockton to the Board of Trustees for the Brockton Public Library for a three-year term ending August 2018. Appointment of Andrea Small Burton, 67 Bigney Ave, Brockton, to the Brockton Planning Board for a five-year term. Appointment of Harold C. Marrow, Jr., 230 West Street, Brockton, to the Brockton License Commission for a three-year term. Appointment of Carlos, Carlos Varela, 40 Briarcliff Road, Brockton, to the Brockton Community Access Board of Directors for a three-year term. Appointment of Ulysses Varela, 40 Briarcliff Road, Brockton, to the Brockton Parks and Recreation Commission for a five-year term. And back to number 61, that appointment of Amana Pilgrim should be doctor. We corrected that when we had it before, when she was before us at finance. So we want to make sure that that is corrected so that when she gets sworn in, um, it is correct on, uh, on the paperwork. So that being said, uh, with those items there, uh, clerk, please call the roll. Yes. 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 And the appointments have been confirmed. I don't know if there's anyone, uh, anybody here this evening? I don't think any of them are here. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Madam Clerk. Appropriation of $45,000 from the Executive Office of Health and Human Services, Massachusetts Department of Mental Health Police Based Jail Diversion Grant for 2015 to City of Brockton Police Department Jail Diversion Grant Fund. This grant gives the police the Brockton Police Department overtime funds to continue to train first responders in the specialized field of mental health first aid. The goal for this grant is to also divert from arrest when possible individuals with mental health and or behavioral issues. issues. Also this year, the additional hiring a part-time clinician to work in the Plymouth House of Corrections with inmates to render mental health and follow-up services both inside and upon their return to Brockton. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. 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 Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Eleven in the appointment. Order is adopted. Ordered that the mayor and or treasurer be authorized to execute any and all documents necessary to sell to Realty LLC, having the usual place of business at 562 on Thatcher Street, Brockton. The possible land located at and known as the vacant land off Thatcher Street in Brockton, Mass. The purchase price for said parcel of land shall be $7,500. Mr. President. Council Stanisky. If I might speak as the uh, chairman for the real estate committee, that this item came through our committee, was voted favorably. Uh, tonight I'm going to make a motion that we actually be full council vote on the substitute order, which uh, is just a way of clearing up. 
a couple of pieces. Uh, okay. Council will have any information anybody might want to have. Okay. Is there any? Uh, second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded that we're going to well, adopt on a substitute order. All in favor of that? Opposed? Can we? That's being done. Will you read it? Questions now on a passage by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. President. Wait. Uh, uh, what, yeah. Could we hear what the substitution is, please, Mr. President? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he'll, he'll read it to you. It's somewhat lengthy to read. Would you like me to read the entire several pages? What the Maybe we should postpone it then. What the substitute order does is clarify certain issues to ensure that there was compliance by the city with the Uniform Procurement Act. It ensures that the issues that are being addressed in the proposed order are satisfactorily addressed. Um, but it doesn't affect the cost. Does it? So it was an issue with procurement that caused um, this to be needing a substitute order, or what was the issue about? It was not the issue with compliance with procurement, but rather showing that procurement had been followed. The and what, why was that necessary? To put it on the face of the order and ensure that the parties that are receiving the various land transfers can show that they have good title to the parcels. And so do we do that with all of our sales? And this was just an oversight, or why, why is this special? It's not special. I think it was just an oversight that the language was not included in there. Okay, so typically it is included. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Council. Any other questions for legal counsel? Mr. Clerk, please through, call the roll. Through, through the, Mr. 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 President, uh, through, through the Chair, uh, Councilor Sadinsky. Yes, Council. Uh, this this land, this land that uh, Everett wants to buy, is it uh, across the street or is it uh, next door to them, on the same side? I have a plan here. If the council would like to see a copy of the plan, is, is it is it buildable? Are they going to be able to utilize this property? That's that's all I want to know. It's not a separate buildable lot, but rather it's being added to land that they already own. Okay. Like All right, thank you. Yeah. Can, can I make a motion that we postpone this so that we can take a look at this information okay. and at least get the blueprint of the plan or something? Mr. President, uh, Council Sullivan. But, but on that motion, though, um, I'm, I'm a member of the Real Estate Committee, and, and Attorney Burke is in the, uh, in the chamber tonight, and I believe he's legal counsel to uh, Mr. Andre. Okay. So, I'll uh, withdraw my second. No objections. It might be appropriate to ask Mr. Burke if anybody has any questions, but it did go and it did get vetted out at Real Estate Committee and it did pass unanimously. Okay. Does anyone wish to have Attorney Burke is here so we can clarify any questions? I'll withdraw questions the motion to hear the attorney. I don't think anyone is disallowing that. So, Attorney Burke, if you want to come up to the, to the podium, thank you. Mr. President, okay. members of the City Council, go thank right you. Ahead. My name is Jim Burke. I'm attorney at law with offices at 48 North Pearl Street, Brockton, Massachusetts. And I have the pleasure to represent Roy Andrade who's really a distinguished businessman in the city, uh, who's operating uh, as uh, Everett's uh, LLC. In this situation, uh, Mr. Andrade's family has been operating that land since the late 1940s. Uh, it became apparent uh, when there was a, a, a survey done by AIR that there was a possibility of an encroachment based on his existing operation and backland rear uh, that was actually owned by the city of Brockton uh, and in fact uh, was uh, south of the dump land and looked like the line of demarcation of, of where the Andrade property was. Uh, we brought that to the attention of the uh, uh, ward councilor uh, and in consultation with the city it was agreed uh, that the uh, mayor would have the assessor make a determination of the fair market value of this two acres of back land that does not have any frontage and does not have any access to uh, any uh, public ways. Uh, in fact, uh, the assessor did make a determination and found that the value was uh, $7,500. Uh, that order was placed before the real estate committee, and I I'm pleased to say the real estate committee uh, recommended its acceptance. To get to uh, Council Dubois' question, uh, the reason for the amendment is that in the discussion of this specific transaction, it became apparent that there's a little side entry road that goes to the water pump station. And in fact, the city of Brockton doesn't have access to that road. It's been using it for a number of years. But the Andrade property actually 
has frontage on the road except for about three or four feet that's owned by the city of Brockton. So as part of this transaction, in order to clarify the issue, Mr. Andrade is giving an easement to the city of Brockton so that the uh, city of Brockton utility trucks can in fact go to the pumping station. Uh, likewise, in order to clarify title on that same access road, and that also includes in the modified order, uh, the city of Brockton is granting an easement to uh, Everett's uh, to allow him to uh, a pass and repass on that same roadway in order that he can get access to his back land. So the reason for the amended order was to clarify actually the on-site situation and to allow for the City of Brockton to accept without consideration uh, an easement from Mr. Andrade and in fact the City of Brockton in addition to selling the property along that access roadway would allow uh, Mr. Andrade's property Everett's LLC to have access over that road. If there's any other questions, I'd be happy to answer. Mr. President, Dubois. may I ask that we uh, remain seated when we ask our questions you of may. Attorney Burke? You may. Thank you very much. Yes. May I ask a couple questions? You go right ahead, Councilor. Hi, Attorney Burke. Thanks for being here and making this, um, you, you know, so much easier to understand. So, what do they plan to do with the land? Well, he just conducting operations. He What's is, operations he, for uh, people that his, don't know? Uh, Everett's LLC, which is uh, in fact a uh, a salvage yard. Is there, do, is there salvage material on the land right now? He has been using this land because he thought it was his since the 1940s. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Bonds. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Attorney Burke. So just to be clear on this map, <clears throat> we're looking behind the current structure. If, if, if I'm Thatcher Street and I'm facing Everett's, we're looking behind where they store the tires and all those things? That's absolutely correct. Okay, so on here, is that lot A? It's is that lot A. Little, that, little is, that is correct. That's the parcel that's oh being conveyed. Gosh, okay, and that, they've been using that for their storage, or whatever they've been using it for, for some time? Since 1948. Okay, now, just one more thing, I, just so that, again, I'm clear and, and I yes, understand what's going on. So, the city's been using that roadway to get access in and out um, to some of the the facilities that they need back there. There is a pumping station to the rear. Okay, so now with selling the land to this private um, business uh, owner, will we then be charged for using that land now? Is, is it, you, you will not. You, okay, the fact, city will not uh, be charged for using that land. There is now. a section uh, up to the rear by uh, lot A. You're reserving an easement. Okay. Uh, so when you're conveying the property, you're reserving the rights to continued access to your real property. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, Councilor. Councilor DiNapoli, you had a question. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, Mr. Burke. How are you? Good evening, Councilor. The, you know, uh, I don't have a problem with this, but I do have a problem with it. They've been using the land since 1948. That's that like 60-something years. Nobody caught this at all? Absolutely not, Councilor. No, so in I mean, well, in fact, if, if you would say caught it, uh, the, the Andrades always thought it was their real estate. Uh, the uh, uh, city of Brockton, in fact, when they were conducting their filling operations, assumed it was the uh, uh, Andrade property because they asked permission to be allowed to park their heavy equipment in the course of operating the dump on the Andrade land, which was, in fact, city, city of Brockton's land. But it was thought by the city that it was the Andrade parcel. Yeah, I, I know exactly where the land is because I've been in the salvage yard many, many times. Sure. But you know, seventy-five hundred dollars, and I mean, if we charge him a hundred bucks a year, I mean, he got a good deal. Right. Well, I think the, I think the determination under the uh, uh, normal conveyance formula is to determine whether or not there is frontage and whether or not there is the usability and the ability <coughs> for the highest and best use of the property for development purposes. And since it does not front on a way, does not front on a public way, mm -hmm. in fact has no frontage on any way, it basically is an unbuildable lot. Right. So if it were going to any third party, it would not be any more no, valuable than right. 7500 No, I understand that. It's only, it's, it's, it's only good to the, to the Everett's, I understand that. Interestingly enough, Councillor, although not to stretch it, but the City of Brockton has been using Mr. Andrade's road to get access since the 1940s, and we're going to give it to you for free. Yeah. 
You're a wonderful guy. <laughs> that's, that's why we have that's why we have shop lawyers like you, Jimmy. Thank you, All right, I, listen. I thank you very much. You, you listen, uh, Everett. You got a good deal. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councillor Councillor Stewart, and then Councillor Sullivan. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, j j more of a comment than a, a question. So, just for those who are listening on television, and for those who may not be aware in the chambers, which I'm assuming most people are, you know, so the Mr. Andre and his family has been a part of the Brockton fabric, you know, forever, um, and they have been instrumental in supporting uh, just a host of charitable, charitable uh, activities in the city, including. I had the pleasure of serving Mr. with Mr. Andre on the Boys and Girls Club board, which, as we all know, he's dedicated most of his life, adult life, to, and not just in, in time, but also in, in, in financial contributions to keep that, that club open. Uh, so it's certainly uh, the kind of business that we want in, in Brockton and also the kind of business owners we want to support in the city. And I certainly know that from my understanding of this situation, uh, it was unintended um, by, on, frankly, on, on all parts in terms of a misunderstanding that was discovered recently. And, and in fact, that particular location is really of no use to anyone um, <coughs> but, uh, but the city and uh, Mr. Andre in terms of um, uh, how it abuts in terms of what, what it can be used for. So I don't think we're, we're disadvantaging anyone uh, by having this organization or the company purchased this land for the fair market value. So I want to place it. Thank you, the record. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. Thank you, Council. Councilor Sullivan. Um, Mr. President, just, uh, just uh, to inform the Council, those that don't sit on the Real Estate Committee, the night that we met in the, in the, in the room back there, Attorney Burke was there, Attorney Gilday, and also the City Solicitor, Phil Mazzarell, who actually did the same, very similar presentation. The question that I asked that night was, how do you come up with $7,500? Um, and, and really, it's, it's, it's useless land. It has no value per se other than to really the buyer because it sits in the back. It doesn't have any frontage, pretty much what the legal counsel said. So to clear up title, it was conveyed to the members of the real estate committee that this really should have been done many, many, many years ago. But, you know, it's never too late to do it. And so it was supported. But we did have uh, legal opinion from the city solicitor's office as well. Point of information. Thank you. Right. Thank you, counselor. That land's even older than uh, Chief Studinsky, so uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, in any case. And a stoop committee made a great decision, Mr. There President. You go. Thank you. Everyone's all set now? Yes. We're good. Thank you. By a roll call vote, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. 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 Why? Yes. Anier. Yes. Monahan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. 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 The order is adopted. And thank you, Mr. Bur Attorney Burke, for being here as well. Appreciate it. An ordinance amending Chapter 27 of the Revised Ordinances of the City of Brockton, Article 4, temporary prohibiting the construction of new personal wireless service facilities, cell towers, Section 27365, temporary moratorium on the constitution of new personal wireless service facilities. Referred to ordinance and planning. An ordinance amending Chapter 2 of the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton be it ordained as follows. Chapter 2, Administration, Article 4, Financial Affairs, Section 2-256, Abatement. Referred to ordinance. Ordered that the Board of Assessors is directed to submit to the City Council to the Office of the City Clerk on or before October 15, 2015, an electronic file in Excel and PDF of the records of abatements for the years 2013, 2014, and 2015 required to be kept by the Board of Assessors pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 59, Section 60. Mr. President. Council Dubois. Um, at this time, I filed this, this order um, and it's... Um, its companion ordinance is number 69, so the number 69 will go through the proper line of um, vetting. This is just to get more information for our city council, which is number 7, the one we're discussing this evening. And because I'd like to give the assessor as much time as possible to compile this information before our October 15th meeting, I would like to suspend the rules and act on this this evening. Second. Motion is made and seconded that we suspend the rules and act on item number seven this evening. All in favor of that? Opposed? We're going to suspend the rules Thank and act you. on item number seven, 70 this evening, uh, Mr. Clerk. So would you please call the roll? Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Napoli. Yes. Dubois. Yes. 
Pioneering. Yes. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. 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 The order is adopted. Uh, Mr. President, if I may, Council so this is just on number 70. Um, Councilor Dubois said that this is in conjunction with 69, so it's just 70. This is just for 70. I just wanted the councilors to know if they wanted information moving forward um, in the future that I have filed a ordinance that if it's approved by the ordinance committee and all of everyone here, it would be a regular information sharing on the um, city's website potentially and definitely to the city council. Electro okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. You, council. Thank you, Council. Item number 71, Madam Clerk. Ordered that the city council approves the boundaries of the proposed D.W. Clark economic opportunity area, more particularly described as 14 East Union Street, Assessors Map 129, Plot 1, plot Parcel ID 129-233 East Union Street, and approves the application for approval of the D.W. Clark EOA to the Economic Assistance Coordinating Council. Refer to finance. Appropriation totaling $488,156,000 from unappropriated estimated receipts, fiscal year 16 tax levy, $450,156 um, to various departments. A further appropriation of $38,000 from unappropriated refuse enterprise estimated receipts um, to DPW Refuse Personal Services other than overtime 28000 and uh, DPW Refuse Personal Services other than overtime 10000 The CFO, in accordance with Section 5 of Chapter 324 of the Act of 1990, certifies that the financial resources and revenues of the City of Brockton are and will be adequate for fiscal year 16 only to support the proposed appropriation for various resources of $488,156 to various departments for purposes of settling a three-year contract with the Laborers' Union. This is a conditional certification for fiscal year 16 only. He is able to provide the certification for fiscal year 16 because the funding comes from unappropriated fiscal year 16 revenues, primarily tax levy growth. However, for fiscal year 17 and beyond, this contract will be Exacerbate, will exacerbate the budgetary imbalance described in its fiscal year 16 budget letter and in the credit reports of Moody's and Standard & Poor. These are available on the Finance Department webpage. Referred to Finance. Appropriation totaling $560,000 from fiscal year 2009 overlay surplus $220,000 and fiscal year 2011 overlay surplus $340,000 to the stabilization fund. This funding comes from the surplus and overlay accounts as identified by the Board of Assessors in a letter dated July 20, 2015. Referred to finance. Mr. President, I'd Council like to move well. for reconsideration in the hope that it does not prevail on number 70. Second. Thank you. Item number 70, motion has been made for reconsideration in hopes it does not prevail. All in favor of reconsideration. All opposed. Reconsideration fails. Thank you. Okay. Appropriation of twenty thousand dollars. Oh, yeah, you said. You appropriation said. of twenty thousand dollars from overlay surplus of fiscal year two thousand eight to library personnel services overtime eight thousand purchase of service twelve thousand to provide the funding necessary for the agreement to add to a grant from the library foundation for the extending of hours at the west and east branches eight hours per week at east branch at, at each branch for the balance of the fiscal year. Refer to finance. All right. Would you finish? Yes. yes. Refer to finance. Appropriation of $130,000 from overlay surplus of fiscal year 2008 to stabilization <coughs> fund to provide additional funding in the stabilization reserve. Refer to finance. Transfer of $16,590 from the ambulance receipts account to department equipment um, for the following two purchases. $15,690 for nine perform mobile software licenses for use by the contracted ambulance service. And, um, $900 for the purchase of free emergency medical dispatch EMD guide cards with racks. Referred to finance. Appropriation of $366,330 from landfill reserve account to Thatcher Street Landfill. Referred, okay. referred to finance. Appropriation of $4,928.75 from Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency SHSP grant to Brockton Emergency Management Agency grant fund. Referred to finance. 
appropriation of 167000 from unappropriated estimated receipts, fiscal year 16 tax levy, um, to library personnel services other than overtime, $165,500, and library personnel services overtime, $1,500. Referred to finance. Appropriation of 218000 from unappropriated receipts, fiscal year 16 tax levy, to, per to police department personnel services other than overtime, 165000 Personnel Department Employee Benefit 51,000. Treasurer and Medicare Tax 2,000. Referred to finance. The President, Councilor Sullivan. Uh, quick question on number 80 uh, relative to the police officers. If you if you refer back to agenda item 40, it talks about a total of 12 officers relative to the increase, whereas 80 says a number of 11. Just wanted to bring that to your attention. Where it should, uh, number 40 does mention the request for a total of 12 officers, and that number 80 is talking about number 11, correct? Yeah. Okay. Is it 12 or 11? Clarify. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll clarify it before we get finance, man. Thank you. We'll get it clarified. There it is, okay. Okay, resolved that the City Council hereby request that Brian Moriarty and Cindy Pendergast, our representative of Naval Works, a, a Southern Mass program, come before a committee of this council to report and lay out the plan for this organization. Referred to finance. Resolved that the City Council hereby authorizes a tax increment financing plan encompassing the property described as 14 East Union Street, Assessors Map 129, Plot 1, Parcel ID okay. 129-233, East Union Street. Re referred to finance. Mr. President. Council Monahan. I'd like to make a motion to accept a late file and to act on, the, act on it tonight on the suspension of the rules. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. We accept a late file. All in favor accepting the late file? And do we have the... Uh, yes, sir. Yes. And then we'll... we'll <coughs> yeah. Communication from the Mayor in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44 recommending that the City Council authorize the appropriation of $36,000 from unappropriate estimated receipts tax levy to procurement personal services other than other times in order to fund a settlement agreement with the Laborers District Council Local 1162. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same pursuant to Chapter 324 of the Acts of 1990. Accepted and placed on file. And there's an appropriation of $36,000 from unappropriate estimated receipts, fiscal year 16 tax levy, to procurement personal services of an overtime in order to fund a settlement agreement between the City of Brockton and the Laborers District Council Local 1162. You want it? That's what we're going to vote on tonight. Done. And, and as Council Monahan asked that we were going to, um, we did suspend the rules and act on, on this this evening. If anybody has any questions in regards to it, I'm going to suspend the rules and uh, I'll, I'll call by roll call vote, Mr. Clerk. No, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. President, Council, Council Rodriguez, could, could we just get a, a little more information on this? I mean, what is it? What is it exactly? Is it Maybe for? I, I think. Uh, I think I could. Can answer any questions? Yeah. Who's it? Who's here? Mr. Sullivan. Pat Sullivan. Okay. Good evening, Council. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Sullivan, go ahead. I'm just speaking as the business manager of uh, 1162. Uh, this is for the procurement clerk uh, who was laid off back in June. Uh, she's coming back now into a new role as it's called uh, floating principal clerk procurement and license. They've been combined, and um, and uh, she's just coming back, basically, from, from a layoff. If you, if you recall, Laurie was laid off from that position when we did the budget this year, and I think there was only two people in City Hall that were, and she was one of them. As, as Pat has mentioned, she is going to come back, and she's going into the procurement office slash license, license commission office, and she's going to be working with all of them and right at this point in time our procurement officer is, is in dire need of the return of her because of things that are backing up and a lot of procurement work and that's why we've taken these steps and I think the union settled um, for doing what they're doing here this this evening and accepting her into that position correct 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 so that's what we're doing council Dubois um, may I sit we'll ask a question 
Go ahead. Thank you. Um, congratulations. I think it's really great that we can uh, bring you back if we can. Um, but my question is, um, when this was all strategized to bring Lori back or to fill this position if we divorce it from the person, um, is, is this what happens within the union? Like what if someone that hadn't been laid off wanted that job and like wanted to bump her elsewhere? Is she coming back at the same level? What's the differences in the position from before to now? Okay, this, um, first of all, Council, this was done before I was the business manager. Okay, great. So okay, just explain so what you know. I, okay. So what happened, um, the, the layoff came about, and um, for some reason they decided, the city and the union at the time, decided to combine because to get better service in the license, I guess, you know, when the, um, the, the person in the license commission was off, she needed uh, a clerk. You couldn't just like stop everything because someone's got a day off or whatever. Right. So they decided to combine. They decided to combine those roles into one. That bumped the position up from what's called a senior clerk, which is basically a, even though it's called senior, it's basically the lowest rung, uh, to a principal clerk, which is the next highest. Uh, there is a there's a, a slight increase. How many steps are in between the the two positions you just no described? No steps. Okay, so great, great. It's the next step right, up. Great. And what it does is it, it gave her a, uh, it gave her probably a couple of thousand more dollars. Right. But, but now she'll be working for both departments and not just one department. She'll be both, right? So she'll be doing her her previous job, but it's added uh, all sorts of responsibilities and different tasks to her job. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Every, all set? I'm all set. All set, Pat? Okay. Yes. Mr. Clerk, would you please uh, call the roll? Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Napoli. Yes. Why? Yes. Pioneering. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. yes. Aiding the affirmative. And the order is adopted, uh, bringing the position uh, back. And uh, Council Barnes. Uh, Mr. President, I was looking through the uh, the agenda, and number 78, it's a uh, being a, it's a grant. Um, I'm not really sure if there's a time limit on it or if we have to uh, do something, act on it in a timely fashion. There's no match to it, and I was just wondering if I put a motion out that we suspend the rules and act on this tonight, if my colleagues second. would support that. Motion been made and seconded that we suspend the rules and act on this this evening. Number all 78. In, number 78. All in favor of suspending the rules? All opposed? And that we're going to vote on it this evening. Uh, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Watt. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Yes. Stewart. Yes. No, I thought that. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 The order is adopted. Mr. President. Council of Denapoli. I'd like to move for reconsideration on. Uh, on the last order that we did under the suspension of the rules, and also we will do the same thing for uh, Councillor Barnes's uh, item number 78. So I'd like to uh, do reconsideration for uh, Laurie's position in item number 78. Second. second. Motion been made and seconded that we're going to do reconsideration. Hopes it does not prevail on item number 78 in the late file pertaining to the position for procurement uh, slash, slash license uh, department. Um, all in favor of reconsideration? <coughs> all opposed? Reconsideration fails. Councilors, just before we go, we're back to regular ses sessions, so we will be meeting next Monday evening right here in the council chambers with Finance Committee starting at 7 o'clock p.m. That's October the 5th, and then we'll pick up from there the following week. As you know, it will be Columbus weekend, so we'll meet on that Tuesday. Keep in mind, it will be Tuesday, October the 13th, so you can set your schedule ahead a little bit. Councilor Studinsky. Uh, Mr. President, if I might, uh, I'd like to make a couple of personal announcements. You may, Council. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Number one, this Wednesday evening, 6.30 p.m., Davis School in Watt 4 on Plain Street. The social justice people will be there to take testimonies. There is a meeting, 6.30 p.m., Davis School. It's in reference to the air quality what will happen as far as the power plant going in there. It's at the Davis School. All are invited, and you can also be witness to anything you want with this panel. Then the second very important one, you saw it on your way in, is a blood drive that's going to be going on October 
15th. It's right outside over on Crescent Street. There'll be a uh, van over there. <coughs> and, uh, it's at, we'll be at the corner of Crescent and Main Street. It's the DFCI BWH Bloodmobile. <coughs> and uh, appointments, uh, you can log in. The, uh, lo the item for uh, using your computer to log in for appointment. Now you can be a walk-in. Uh, photo ID is required for your new donor. Uh, anybody who has never given blood, uh, it's an exhilarating feeling that you, you, down the road your blood's going to matter in, in keeping somebody else alive, healthy. Uh, it's, it's a great thing to do. And uh, they also have been sponsored by the D Jelly Joe uh, Angelo Deli, and there's a, items that will be given to anybody who donates. Uh, it's a real move on to get good quality blood. That's why they came to Brockton. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mr. Thank Mr. You, Mr. Mr. President, I, I do want to commend Council Monaghan, who does give blood on a regular basis because you get a cookie afterwards, and he loves cookies. <laughs> well, I'd also like to mention Council. that I do give blood, but the last time I was there, when they said it was 70 percent, they wouldn't accept it. <laughs> Mr. President. Councilor Dubois. May I, may I have a moment of personal privilege? Yes, you may. So just to follow up on a wonderful, my fellow Ward 4, um, my fellow city councilor, uh, the councilor from Ward 4's comments about this Wednesday evening. So the, uh, I'm really happy that this is happening. Um, the Executive Office of Energy and the Environment are sending representatives to Brockton on Wednesday evening in the Davis School, <coughs> Ward 4, um, at 6.30. There's this thing that's called the Environmental Justice um, Draft Policy <coughs> for how the Executive Office of Environment and Energy is going to um, manage all sorts of permits, be it the power plant permit or a transfer station permit or any type of permit that comes under that purview. And um, there is a draft policy that you can now read if you look, Google search it, and uh, EEA, EJ draft policy, and you can make comments. And that's what they're coming to um, hear from the residents. So they're going to give a small little presentation about what environmental justice is. And environmental justice, as we all know in Brockton, and I say this at the State House all the time, people in Brockton know what environmental justice is. A lot of state representatives did not know what that means. So they'll be coming down to, in, environmental justice means that people get to um, enjoy their quality of life and their health regardless of race, ethnicity, income level, education status, everybody should be um, not polluted or polluted equally. It shouldn't be on a basis on who has more power. So that is what the Governor Baker has asked all of his executive branches to come up with an environmental justice policy and the Executive Office of Energy and Environment is the first one that's going through this process. So come to the Davis School. I will bring sweets. It's this Wednesday at 6.30. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. I'm if I might, I Go ahead. apologies to our rep. Our rep is very, very, very important in this item, and uh, she's worked hard in this field. And Thank many you. thanks to myself and the other constituents. Work great. Work great. Just, just before we conclude, councillors, I do want to bring you up to speed on another a matter that Councillor Studinsky and I have been working on for the last month or so, and that is preparing to name the building, which was the Crescent Credit Union for the late Paul B. Studinsky, Jr., Mayor, who his portrait's hanging right to the right of me. We're in the process right now and have already met with sign design, Council Studinsky and I, to design the signs, and we're hoping to have everything up and in place uh, within, I would say, the middle of uh, October, no later than the end, but we hope to be doing a dedication uh, before the month of October concludes of that building in the proper manner. It's our building, um, and I've already talked to the school department, and they're very well aware of what we are doing. But as I indicated to you, it is our building. So um, it's going to be known as the Paul V. Studinsky uh, Mayor Building. It's going to say um, municipal slash school administration is what it's going to be called. So uh, it'll be a great honor, and we're getting ready to, to do that with the, my good friend, Council Studinsky. So I wanted to let everybody know that. Any other business to come before Council Cruz? If I could have a moment of personal privilege, I just. Uh it's supposed to rain, so the public may not want to come, but finally, tomorrow at 1.30, there will be a press conference slash groundbreaking at the War Memorial Building for the West Elm Street uh, construction. 
you'll actually see equipment on the road in the next couple of days. Hey. It's been a long time coming, and it's even been postponed twice in the last two weeks. But it will be tomorrow at 1.30. The public's invited. But uh, you may want to avoid the road because there's equipment on it now instead of because there's holes in the road. So, thank you. Great. Thank you, Councilor. So and President, Council a moment of personal privilege. Yes, you may. On behalf Council. of the Council, I just want to thank everybody that went to the polls last Tuesday. Right. The, uh, the turnout was higher than we expected, believe it or not. But we hope uh, more people will go out and do their civic duty November 3. Thank you. Thank you. Any other business to come before this Council this evening? Seeing none, this meeting adjourned.